Well, for the first time since 2001, two teams are set to score off in the opening round of the playoffs for the third consecutive year. Back then, it was Oilers and Dallas, and now it's the Oilers and Kings. We're ready for round one. Welcome to the panel presented by Sportsnet. Please be joined by a pair of voices of your Edmonton Oilers, Jack Michaels and Bob Stauffer. Bob, Edmonton, L.A., Round three, what do you expect come Monday night? Well, I think this is, you know, I think it's going to be closer than it. there's a lot of people out there that think, oh, the Oilers got them right where they want them. They yeah. beat them the last two years, and that's true. But, you know, what we've seen here is that LA's got a good club as well. They took Edmonton to seven games uh, without Drew Doughty and Victor Arvidsson a couple years ago. Last year, they went to six. Don't forget they had the lead in both series. So I have a healthy amount of respect for the LA Kings. I also have belief in the Edmonton Oilers. I do think Edmonton's got a better team than they've had in the past. Um, but I think in LA's case, they got a wild card in Pierre Luc Dubois. You know, they gave up a lot to get him and maybe altered a bit of their depth. But they do have an emerging star in Quinton Byfield that wasn't at the same level last year. It's going to be a really intriguing matchup. Jack, Chris Knobloch went 46, 18, and 5 since taking over the Oilers bench. I mean, a 700 plus points percentage leads the National Hockey League. He's got some interesting decisions to make. No Vander Kane, no Matthias Janmark on the ice today at practice, as well as Dylan Holloway. Has he worked his way into the conversation of being on the opening roster on Monday? Oh, he's, he's absolutely worked his way into the conversation. I think they're going to have a hard time keeping him out of the lineup. Yeah. Now, they may very well do. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I think Dylan Holloway belongs in, in the game one lineup. I think he's earned that right, not only with his play at the National Hockey League level, but sometimes guys go down to the American Hockey League and they come back as different players. I mean, and, and in that category, I know Philip Broberg is – down to the American Hockey League right now, but I would not be surprised if he sees significant playing time at some point in a future Oilers playoff series, if not this one against Los Angeles. Those are two wild cards. I mean, Bob talked about a wild card for L.A. Well, Pierre-Luc Dubois is a proven NHLer, but Philip Broberg and Dylan Holloway, in my opinion, have greater ceilings in terms of what their high-range game might look like, and it might tip the balance in a series for Edmonton in terms of depth. Bob talked about L.A. and a, a team that, you know, has given Edmonton problems in the last two series. But the problem is for the Kings, they didn't win them. And there's some psychological scars, I think, that were incurred by Los Angeles. As Bob mentioned, three games to two in the first series and two games to one and a 3 nothing lead in game four in the second series. So it's not only the matchup that gives L.A. problems, but it's a bit of a mental hurdle that's going to give L.A. problems. Don't forget, Edmonton won three out of four in this series. It is hard to beat the Edmonton Oilers four times in a best of seven, scraping out a 2-1 verdict. And here's the difference in my opinion, between the two teams. Edmonton's goaltending is better. So if they, best case scenario for Los Angeles, if they played seven 2-1 games in this series, I'm still picking Edmonton. And because Stuart Skinner is a better goaltender right now than Cam Talbot and David Riddick, I would be more concerned, quite frankly, if Jonathan Quick was still on the other side, if he wasn't a Ranger and he and he was a King instead. I think Edmonton's better equipped to win those low-scoring games than L.A. right now. And that's the only way I think L.A. can win. They're not going to outscore Edmonton. Look at Edmonton's numbers. They're among the league leaders in wins this season when giving up one goal or less. That's why I think this series decidedly does belong in favor of Edmonton. I think perhaps more so than the last two. You know, and, and Tony, what I would say here is I have a healthy respect for the Kings and their organization. That said, uh, you know, I look at, and you look at Dubois, he is a, a multiple 60-point guy. I don't think Todd McClellan saw his best. So I think he's obviously performed a little bit better. But I do think when you take a look at the impact that Velarde and Ayafalo had in last year's series, you can make an argument that that, has maybe altered their depth a little bit from where they were at before. It's interesting with L.A. They got Matt Roy's a free agent at the end of this season. They're going to take that money. They're going to spend it in goal in the future. So I concur with my partner's thoughts here. I do think Edmonton's have got the advantage in goal. But if you look at the L.A. Kings save percentage, it's been better than Edmonton's this year. And part of that is the style of play. And they play that very passive. Some people call it a 1-3-1. One, one. I'd almost say it's a 1-1-3 one, one, in the neutral zone. And that's why a guy like Holloway could be important because Edmonton's got to get good 
uh, you know, got to be able to, to chip and chase pucks and get in on retrieval and physically hit and bang LA's defense if they're going to play that passive approach. And that's where Holloway's speed comes in. But let's not think back to the first or the last game the Oilers played the Kings. Evander Kane set the tone. He took a penalty, but he set Might have been the best penalty the Oilers took he, all year. But he set the tone. He drilled Drew Doughty. And that's Edmonton's going to need – Drew Doughty plays 25 minutes a game. The Oilers are going to need to do a little bit of that. So, uh, out of a professional courtesy and respect, I think the Kings are good. I do think Edmonton's probably better than they've been. We'll see where L.A.'s at. They are bigger up front. We'll see whether or not they're better. And in terms of goal, I mean, Cam Talbot, we, we, we you know like him as a guy. Yeah. But they've bounced – They've had rotating goaltenders there the last couple of years. And usually what happens with younger goalies is they struggle in their first playoffs, and then they take another step. And I think I'm going to expect that out of Stuart Skinner. Tony, no one's saying the L.A. Kings aren't good. Yeah. Fifteen of the 16 teams in the Stanley Cup playoffs are legitimately good teams. I think Spencer Carberry and a, and a combination and of factors luck. might have dragged Washington in. I mean, they've got the worst goal differential in the Stanley Cup playoffs in, I believe, 33 years. But 15, 15 teams are good. I'm not saying L.A. Yeah. isn't good. I would caution Bob to remember that the same percentage is a little skewed by what occurred in the first 18 games of the year. Especially, since, on, especially on the road. With since them. then, Edmonton's save percentage is right there above the league average and above the L.A. Kings save percentage for the last 65 games that you talked about with Chris Knobloch behind the bench. So, again, I feel like Bob makes a good point about the depth. I think – when you looked at the first two series between these two clubs, you might have been able to say, hey, a slight edge in depth, and maybe the goal, the goaltending is sawed off. This year, I think those advantages belong to Edmonton, and that's why I think Los Angeles, while still a good team, while still a team that I expect to take a game or two off Edmonton in this series, I think their percentages of beating Edmonton have actually decreased. And Jack and Bob, you guys both talk about the play of Stuart Skinner. Well, last year in the postseason, you talked about a young goaltender struggling, and he was very honest and very vocal about it. 12 starts, 883 save percentage. Well, this season he's rebounded with 36 victories. I mean, the play of number 74 has been very good for the Empton Oilers. But very quickly. Yep. I was just going to say there okay. is there is something that needs to happen here okay. at some point. Do you know when the last time Edmonton opened a playoff series at home with a victory? <laughs> yes. Because Jack does. Do you know how far back it goes? You weren't even born yet. Okay. I only had one chin back then. Okay. <laughs> what year yeah. are we talking? 1990. May, 1990. May, May 2nd of 1990, uh, game one at home against Chicago. Now, some extenuating circumstances during the days in which we had no salary cap in the league. The Oilers did make the playoffs. They but didn't we're have off. home ice they for 20 years. They didn't have home <laughs> ice for 20 years. But I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Against San Jose in 2017, against Winnipeg in 20, or against Chicago in 2020, Winnipeg in 2021, against the Kings in 22 and 23, the Oilers lost the opening game at home. They need to go out there and grab the series right from the start. And because I, I'll tell you what, if they win Game One at home, it to open the series, I do think it could go the way Jack is. Yeah. suggesting in terms of the matchup. And, and it's important to note, hey, they have won a game one in the McDavid era, and they didn't win the series. They won the first two in Anaheim. And, and, and uh, look, I, I think Bob and I expect a competitive series, but I think what we're suggesting, at least I am, is I, I don't know whether – I think L.A.'s – chances have actually gone down over the course of the couple years. Uh, I, I think Edmonton's depth uh, and goaltending are better. When you talk to the Oiler veterans, they say we're a harder team to play against and we keep adding maybe one extra layer of depth. So when the players feel that way and you have an extra year under the belt of Stuart Skinner, I think you come in as a more – I mean, they're the oldest team in the league now. This is not a young group of players that are putting their toe in the water. And I think sometimes at times in the playoffs, Edmonton has done that. They've, they've dipped their toe in and let other teams kind of dictate how the series was going to start. I don't expect that to happen this year. And you know what? This atmosphere in this plot and inside that building will help urge them on, hey, you were a dominant home team down the stretch. Go take care of business. Monday, April 22nd, 8 p.m. Mountain. That's puck drop for game number one. And as Jack mentioned, this plaza will be off the charts. Rogers Place will be off the charts. And oil country, as they always do, will bring it once again. Here we go.